It's been a fat minute since I did one of these, that being the 32 team bracket. It really doesn't need any introduction, it's just a March Madness styled bracket with one winner at the end. However, I have added three new things to make it as entertaining as possible, that being play for seeding, player stealing, and power ups. Let's begin with number one, where we will start in a fresh 2023 franchise simulation. Depending on the placement of the teams in the regular season, we'll decide where they are seated on the bracket. Alright, simulating is underway, let's see what our results are. Okay, let's start with the AFC first seed, which to my surprise is the the Buffalo Bills at 13 and 4. The Cincinnati Bengals, however, who have been struggling to pass the football five yards down the field, actually has the two seed. The Miami Dolphins, who I think are the current front runners in the AFC, they got the five seed. To my surprise, if this was an actual simulation for the playoffs, the Chiefs didn't even make it. They're gonna get the eight seed. And I guess the football gods have two middle fingers up for the Jets, one for real life and one for Madden, because they go one through 16 right here, and they're gonna get the 16 seed in the AFC. I guess Rogers tore his Achilles in this as well, or he's just isolating himself. Who knows? If you want to prevent further brain damage, damage in this video, I advise clicking off the video right now because the number one seed in the NFC is the Atlanta Falcons. Number three seed in the NFC is the Dallas Cowboys. I wonder how they'll mess this one up. I don't know what kind of Remember the Titans Disney movie storyline this is, but somehow the Chicago Bears went 9-8 and eight and they have the seven seed. I wonder if Madden knows we're not in 2008 anymore. Uh, who am I kidding? The economy sucks. At least we end on a positive high note because the Arizona Cardinals are in fact the 16th seed in the NFC. So the bracket is set. Let's start with the AFC in the upper left quadrant where our number one versus our number 16 matchup is the Bills versus Jets, followed by Chiefs and Broncos, Dolphins versus Texans, and Jaguars versus Colts. In the second quadrant in the bottom left, the AFC begins with the Chargers versus Steelers, then the Ravens versus Patriots, Browns versus Raiders, and then the number two versus 15, Bengals versus Titans. Now kicking off the NFC in the top right quadrant, the Falcons versus Cardinals is a matchup in this, and then the Rams, Buccaneers, Giants, Commanders, and Eagles, Seahawks. And our fourth and final quadrant in the bottom right is Packers versus Vikings, Cowboys versus Saints, Bears versus Panthers, yikes, and Niners versus Lions. Now, yes, I did mention there's players stealing. It's going to be pretty straightforward. You win a game, you steal a player, but I also mentioned there's going to be power-ups. Here's how they're going to work. As I just showed you, the 32-team bracket can be broken up into four total quadrants, where eight teams are in each quadrant. As you can see here, there are seven empty spaces for those eight teams to move in the bracket to. You can see numbered right here. So starting in the first quadrant, we'll roll for our first power-up, which will be Rewind. And now we'll take an RNG, set it from one to seven for the total spaces. We'll generate a number, and it's going to go on the fourth space. So now you can see the rewind power up is placed on the fourth spot right here, which means whoever's going to win this game between the Jaguars and Colts will get this power up. So now onto the second quadrant, which is also the AFC. It's going to be evolved. This will be placed on the five spot and that will look a little something like this. And now in quadrant three in the NFC, we'll have afterlife generating its spot. I'll go to the two. So this means the winner of Rams Buccaneers will get the afterlife power up. So this leaves the final and fourth quadrant with the double trouble power up. Double trouble will go on the five. And so this is what our bracket will look like going into our first game. We have all four powers placed in their own quadrants and now we'll start the AFC with the Bills and the Jets. Um, perhaps it's too late to donate my left Achilles to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the final score of this game was 38 to 0. If you can't beat him, you join him, said Sauce Gardner, probably after losing 38 to nothing. Either my fake porcelain glass eyes need a new prescription, or the scoreboard actually reads 21 to 24. The Broncos are down by a field goal right now, and it looks like they're gonna play for a field goal, which makes sense because they probably can't score a touchdown anyways. Unfortunately, Sean Payton's time management skills is just as bad as Nathaniel Hackett, so it looks like we're playing for overtime, which is the most stupidest thing you could do against the Kansas. The City Chiefs. Well, after sitting on my phone for like 10 minutes, something interesting has finally happened, and that's a third down and 14 for Mahomes has thrown it out. Okay, well, we're gonna have a punt. Oh my goodness, how did he come down with that? Damn, okay, 21 yard line. The Broncos are actually gonna win a football game. You know, we might as well just call it quits right now and just say the Broncos won this video because, I mean, after all, they just took down the defending champions with an overtime touchdown 30 to 24. And you know my rules, we can't take quarterbacks, so that means we'll take Travis Kelsey instead, which means the Broncos are stuck with Russell Wilson. Well, we might as well call it here, never mind. Even though the Texans are a flying under the radar team. They did just kind of play the team that dropped a 70 bomb this season, so I didn't really expect much. And now with a 95 overall Laramie Tunsil at left tackle, it'll probably prevent Tua from ever throwing up gang signs on the floor again. So just a quick bracket update. Remember, this next game is important. That's because the rewind power awaits the winner. It's between the Jaguars and the Colts. Now the Colts and the Jaguars in overtime, and we have a touchdown here for the first lead in overtime for the Indianapolis Colts to Zach Pascal from Gardner Minshew, which means the Jaguars 
Jaguars have a chance to respond starting now. Third and 10. Trevor Lawrence just going to throw this one flag, though. Almost picked off. What's the flag? Pass interference on the defense, which is going to place the ball at the 28-yard line. Oh, my. Field goal won't cut it, so they're going to need to convert here. It's a play-action pass for Trevor Lawrence. Steps up this one, delivers to the three. Caught first down and goal. I was looking at my phone the entire time, but they did score a touchdown. The Colts get a chance to answer back. Second and two. This will put them into Jaguars territory and close to field goal range. Colts decided to kick a field goal to win the game, and they got it. They went down the field. They got enough, and they end this game against the Jaguars. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad they won this game because who the hell would I give the Jaguars if they got the rewind power up? I don't know, Maurice Jones Drew. First, let's begin with our pickup from player stealing. It's going to be Calvin Ridley, the 85 overall. But even better, the rewind power up kicks in and it's going to give him 99 overall Hall of Fame QB Peyton Manning. Yes, the rewind power up lets you get quarterbacks. I allow it. This is the 6 versus the 11 seed. Currently, the 11 seed Steelers down by 5 points right now. Delivering. Now we have a completion to the 36. No timeouts with a minute and 26 seconds. 60 seconds to their name from the 36. Kenny Pickett stands up. Now he runs for the first down. Tries a slide head first. Just gets ganged up on, but now 55 seconds from the 48. At this rate, they're burning 20 seconds of play right now. Now delivering out to the sideline. It's a catch. Ruled bounds into the 38. They desperately needed that time stoppage. Now with 30 seconds, I didn't even realize they had a timeout, which will come in handy because they should probably use it right about now. Hello, Mac and Joey Bosa just showed Kenny Pickett how they do things on the west side. Now from the 47 yard line Kenny Pickett just goes short delivers oh no inbounds too I think that's probably the final play not all hope is lost then he can they didn't even snap the damn ball. I say the same joke every single time Madden does this, but that is a Dallas Cowboys moment. And now with TJ Watt added on to this defense, it'll now make the opposing quarterbacks piss their pants. You know, I gotta say, 14 points for the New England Patriots, the way they're playing right now in real life is honestly a lot, but not good enough to beat the Baltimore Ravens. You know, when the best player you have to give up is Kyle Duggar, it definitely shows you have some problems with your current day roster. Well, with two minutes remaining, the Browns defense has hold the Raiders down to 14 points. They can get to a third and 11 here. Well, with only nine 90 seconds in this game. We've only seen 28 points scored and Amari Cooper comes down with a catch to bring it to the 38 yard line first and 10. Decently lengthy kick actually. Let's just see if he can put three on the board for the Cleveland Browns. Sure enough 17-14. Jimmy Garoppolo from his own 22 yard line. Okay well down he goes. From my latest understanding Jimmy Garoppolo has a concussion so don't blame him. He's not in the right headspace, everyone. But now with 18 seconds from the own 14 yard line he decides just to throw a slant pass like that's gonna do anything. Jimmy Garoppolo he evades the pressure. It is this the dagger? Oh, okay. Hold up. They have a chance. I mean, this is still like a 55 yarder, but you're talking about one of the best kickers in the game. He is not one of the best kickers in the game. Well, the Cleveland Browns survived this one 17-14. I truly wonder, how will Deshaun Watson celebrate winning this game? He'll celebrate by adding Devontae Adams, of course. What were you thinking of, weirdo? They decided to run a play before the two-minute warning. Not really a wise decision by Mike Vrabel, but nonetheless, he completes a first down to Derrick Henry. From the 48, Ryan Taylor delivers upfield. This one to DeAndre Hopkins, and he's going to shred his way into the 32. Looking a little too good to be true right now for the Titans. 90 seconds, Taylor steps up this one, hits D-Hop again in the middle of the field Gets a move on to the 14. And now 60 seconds, standing at the 20. Delivers this one up the middle of the field again. The Bengals can just not guard the middle of the field. This time it's Traylon Burks, and that's a touchdown to take the lead for the Titans. And of course, go for two. This will make it a three-point game to keep him alive just in case overtime is needed. And a completion to Derrick Henry is good. 31-28. Perhaps the Titans gave them a little too much time as T. Higgins completes this one. Never mind, he fumbles the football, but picks it right back up because the Titans do not know how to dive on the football, even though T. Higgins was just tackling the man the entire damn time. Second Second and 20 with 35 seconds left. Burrow from the 39 delivers up the middle of the field. Ooh, good defense. Third and 20. Either way, they'll be going for it. They get a good chunk of it right there, but it's going to be fourth down. Well, the game is on the line for five yards right here. Almost intercepted, but it doesn't matter what happened there because it's an incompletion. Titans take over and a victory for the 15 seed. And I would say this is a pretty solid addition. That's Jamar Chase to the Tennessee Titans. And with that game, we've now closed out the first round from the AFC, which gives these eight teams remaining in the AFC. And now we'll continue on. On, on the right side with the NFC, starting with the Falcons and Cardinals. I'm going to interrupt from that happening, however, to tell you something just as exciting, and this involves you joining on the action on the field. In collaboration with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL, you can place just a $5 wager and receive $200 worth of bonus bets to your account instantly. So if you would like this $200 worth of bonus bets, all you need to do is use my promo code DEANSWORLD. With these bonus bets, you can stay up to date by placing same-game parlays, a way to combine multiple bets on singular games 
claims for a shot at even higher payout. But if sports betting is not allowed in your state, you're not out of luck. That's because DraftKings Daily Fantasy also gives you a chance at winning cash prizes. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code DEANSWORLD, that's all caps, and with a $5 wager, you can get $200 worth of bonus bets. That's code DEANSWORLD. Big thanks to DraftKings for being today's video sponsor. I don't know what's worse, the Atlanta Falcons getting the number one seed or the fact that the number one seed could lose to the 16 seed. 40 seconds from the 40, another pass completion for Joshua Dobbs gets him to the 43 in Falcons territory. Now with 30 seconds, Dobbs again, another pass completion, that's field goal range, another upset? What is happening? You know, I don't know if I can actually call this one an upset. I mean, after all, it is the Atlanta Falcons we're playing here, but for the win, I guess, Arizona Cardinals 19-7. Lead. Well, we just saw a 15 seed move on. Now we're seeing a 16 seed move on. I love Madden. I don't really know if this addition will do much for the Arizona Cardinals, but best of luck because now you have Jesse Bates. And of course, as a reminder, this next game is important because it decides who gets the afterlife power. It'll be between the 8 seed Rams and the 9 seed Buccaneers. We've been seeing a lot of fun scores today. Yet another one down by six as Baker Mayfield, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, delivers a long shot, delivers this one for a first down to the 35 in Rams territory. The Buccaneers Buccaneers time management skills has the same correlation as a fly flying into a bug zapper. They're both incredibly stupid. Third down and 11, now only 11 seconds, but at least Baker Mayfield can throw on the run, hits the field goal here, and no good. <laughs> I can tell you right now, whoever wins this game is going to get probably the best power up on the board to the end zone, touchdown with two seconds remaining, it's Devin Tompkins. What a delivery. Extra point takes the lead. Sure enough, that gets it done for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They'll get a win here and they'll also get the afterlife power up. But not only will they get a second chase in case they lose, they will also get probably one of the best player steals in this video and that's going to be 99 overall, Aaron Donald. You know, technically this is considered an upset because the Giants are the 5C, but no way in hell I'm calling this an upset. The Commanders were going to win this game to begin with. Matter of fact, every time the Commanders are the underdog or just not favorites, they end up winning anyways. I mean, they are the streak enders. They are known for that. And this now leaves Saquon Barkley to join the Washington Commanders. Now let's talk about upset watch because the number one seed Eagles are actually tied right now with the number 13 seed Seahawks. And this is Jackson Smith and the Jigba getting them to the 14 yard line. It's kind of sucky for the Eagles that they have to play the Seahawks here. It's just how they end up going on the standings. But now that's in field goal range right there. This is going to be an easy win for the Seahawks, I think. So they're going to leave about eight seconds left on the clock. But nonetheless, the Seahawks should win this game with this field goal right here to make it 31 to 28. Damn, this is crazy. I mean, now with the Eagles out, it seems like the only real competition in the NFC is now the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, it's the Niners conference to lose at this point. Good news for the Seattle Seahawks, though, because both their best two wide receivers from Ole Miss, now A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf. Just a quick bracket update before we get to our final quadrant of the first round. The NFC teams that made it past so far are just a bunch of cupcakes. This is looking very weird, but we will continue on with the most mid-battle ever between the NFC North teams, the Packers and the Vikings. Well, it looks like Jordan Love took my being mid compliment a little too seriously, considering he just dominates the Vikings here, here at home. Interesting. Unfortunately for the Green Bay Packers, however, Justin Jefferson's reached the IR, but still not a bad pickup because they really needed a new tight end after Lucas Musgrave got injured. It's TJ Hawkinson. Whoa, don't look now, but the Dallas Cowboys might actually win a first round playoff game. They're up by four points against the New Orleans Saints, and Derek Carr is dealing with a third down and 10, in which he's just going to chuck it out of bounds and set up a fourth down and 10. Nice. Well, here's the game on the line right here from his own 25. Can he at least get the first down? Yes, he does. Has a receiver in stride and pushes midfield. Okay. It wastes about 30 seconds to be exact but still at midfield and now they'll get some more out of it round 25 that looked like a horse collar or a face mask as well that's gonna push him up to the goal line close around there i take back what i said previously the cowboys are not gonna win a first round playoff game and now we have a slant touchdown Derek Carr gets us in the end zone and the new orleans saints take a lead oh go figure it was slant boy too he's still catching slant touchdowns to this day well who knows maybe the cowboys have a chance after all they do have three timeouts and there's a first down to cd lamb 12 seconds from the midfield now delivers and no one's on Michael Gallup, he is going to outburn the Saints defense. Never mind, the Cowboys take the lead right back. They'll be moving on to the second round. Very impressive comeback win by the Dallas Cowboys. Makes it 38-34. to They'll be moving on to the second round. And they'll be taking New Orleans' very own Marshawn Lattimore with them. You know, the fact alone that this is a matchup right here just really hurts my soul. Like, I really wish neither of these teams could advance, but one of them has to because they got matched up. It's going to be the Carolina Panthers. Hmm, now doesn't this ring a bell? You know, it sucks to say that this 
this is a matchup as well, not because their teams suck, it's because both these teams are really damn good. Somehow the Lions end up getting the 15 seed, which makes zero sense, and they end up playing the number 2 seed Niners. So now we're looking at another technical upset with the 15 seed leading the 2 seed right now. The Niners are looking to change that, however, they have a minute and 30, and Brock Purdy just runs backwards, just completely runs the other way, and he's going to lose like 10 yards here. Congratulations. So we're down in 14 from their own 36. They just had to burn one timeout. Brock Purdy is going to get it back to Debo Samuel. This is a first down. I don't know how they got all that back, but now first and 10 from the 42. For whatever reason, the Niners called a timeout, even though Debo Samuel stepped out of bounds, so it prevented them from getting a touchdown, but they'll take the field goal. We'll go to overtime. Well, only one more play for midfield it's just gonna have to be a touchdown pass for jared goff it's gonna get the distance but will it land to somebody's hands oh no oh no oh no there's a penalty marker no this is the most dreadful thing every single time it happens oh my god yep you know what that means because nfl would not move that stupid rule to make it a 15 yard penalty because it happened in the end zone it sets the ball at the one yard line Congratulations to the Detroit Lions for winning the most cupcake finish of a game ever, and they will take down the San Francisco 49ers and be the final team to move on to the Sweet 16. That is so stupid. <laughs> it's always a tough decision when I'm deciding who to give up from the San Francisco 49ers, but this time I decided to do Christian McCaffrey because it's the one thing the Lions offense lacks. It's a good, good run game. I mean, the teams that are making onto the Sweet 16 on both sides, it's just random. It's the Broncos, the Commanders, the Colts, the Panthers. This is so weird. We still have two more power-ups to claim going into this week 16 as well. So we'll continue with our first matchup, the AFC, the Bills, and the Broncos. <laughs> You know, starting this week 16, I gotta say, I'm impressed with the Denver Broncos, but being impressed is not enough because they're not gonna get it done. Buffalo Bills just got a pick as well. The Buffalo Bills collectively decided that beating the Broncos by one score is not enough, so they just got another pick, and now they're gonna win this game 35-20. to And it looks like Taylor Swift's boyfriend's going on tour as well. So big implications here. Remember, Peyton Manning is that quarterback for the Colts, because the last time they played, they got the rewind power, and Michael Pittman had a fight to get out of balance. He couldn't, though, so they have to burn a timeout. Second down and four, Peyton Manning from his own 40-yard line, not really playing how Peyton Manning usually plays, because that is horrible IQ right there. This is the smartest quarterback in the world we're talking about, and this is what we're doing with 30 seconds left in the game. But the kick was good for the Colts and Dolphins. Now we're going to overtime. I would be surprised here if the Colts defense can stop him from getting three yards. Raheem Mostert couldn't even get it. It's fourth down and one. The Dolphins are punting. Peyton Manning has yet to throw a football in overtime. This is his first pass here. He's already at the 46 yard line. He completes this one. It's going to pick up about eight yards. Now they're at the field goal range. So sure enough, this is just a pooch kick from the 12 yard line. About a 20 yard kick, and the Colts will be moving on to the Elite Eight. No thanks to Peyton Manning being their quarterback and they're about to add a really solid player. Peyton Manning and Tyreek Hill is a duo I thought we had never would hear, but it's definitely a duo I'd like to see. Now, just as a reminder, as we approach our next game, this has the evolved power up on the line. It's going to go to either the Chargers or the Ravens, so I might as well explain how it works right now. The very two bottom players by overall on the said team that gets this power up will be boosted up to match the ratings of the highest overall player on their team. So again, that will be either the Chargers or the Ravens, which will go to that game right now. It's been a defense heavy game and now the Chargers down by eight from their own six yard line have to go 94 yards somehow that's not a good start we're now down to 90 seconds 45 seconds left Justin Herbert somehow gets this one off and now out to the running to the 30 to the 20 not tackled yet now down to the 11 they call a timeout here I have no clue how Justin Herbert just sidearmed that one so far what kind of pass was that it was super wobbly but it made it like 50 yards down the field I mean like I'm not like any scientist but the physics behind that pass makes zero sense the Chargers still have to find the end zone though so they're 11 yards out Herbert goes that way that's an end zone touchdown right there to the tight end Gerald Everett but now they gotta go for two to tie this one up they're gonna pass Herbert just goes to a slant no he missed it wide right Roquan Smith was guarding and forced an incompletion Ravens take over well not after we have an onside kick right here down by two and oh hold up a second no one's got it oh the Ravens got it on a ricochet it went right to that dude's hands and he couldn't catch it Ravens got a little lucky right there. We were that close to seeing an onside kick recovery, which I've never seen in this yet, but the Ravens will win 17 to 15. So the first thing we'll start with is the player steal. That's going to be TJ Watt, the 97 overall. And now we'll do the evolved power-up, which worked out pretty well for the Ravens, because as you look at it, TJ Watt is now the highest rated player on the Ravens now after adding him. So this means the bottom two players in their team will be boosted to match up with TJ Watt at a 97 overall. So if we go ahead and sort this by the lowest overall, you can see we get a tight end named Tyler Ott. 
This next tight end's on injury reserve, so we're not going to do him, which means the next one up will be Josh Johnson, the quarterback. Both these players begin up to a 97 overall. So now you can see the Ravens have a new starting quarterback and new starting tight end, which is ironic. They're going to replace both Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. So now Josh Johnson, 97 overall quarterback, and now Tyler Ott, a 97 overall tight end. We have a minute and four for number four. 18 to 14 right now, down by four. Four for four. Kareem Hunt takes us one for four yards. Because now third down and four with 14 seconds. I don't expect much from the Cleveland Browns other than Deshaun Watson just to throw this as far as he can. He has the protection. The Titans only rush three. Now he's going to scramble and just throws it out of bounds considering nothing was out there. Okay. And now fourth down and four with four seconds. Someone needs to tell me how many times I've said four this game of loan. Deshaun Watson's just going to throw on the run. There's zero seconds. That was the worst performance in the game I think I've ever seen. And now our final pickup before we go to the NFC side will be Miles Garrett joining the Tennessee Titans. And just a quick bracket update before we go to the NFC. We have our four AFC teams moving on to the Elite Eight. It'll be the Bills versus Colts and Ravens versus Titans. Were you expecting this? I really don't understand what's made the Cardinals a threat in this video. Maybe it's because they played the Falcons and Buccaneers, but nonetheless, it's a tied game and it's not going to be for long because now the Buccaneers are in range to kick a field goal. So here's the kick to make it 17-14. to 14. Sure enough, the Cardinals should lose eventually. You know, there's not much talent to be going around when you're taking a player from the Arizona Cardinals, so instead we'll just take the Atlanta Falcons hand-me-downs. As expected, the Seahawks get this one done. I mean, the commanders only really play at their best level when their backs are against the wall, and this was kind of an even matchup in a way. Man, the Seahawks' run game hasn't been this good since that one time they ran the football the one-yard line the Super Bowl. Wait a second. Once again, we jump back to the bracket because we have our final power up remaining on the board. It's going to be either the Packers or a Cowboys. A very classic matchup right here. One of these teams will get the double trouble power up. You already know what it does. When they win again, they get still two players instead of one. You know, I don't know what my expectations were for Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers, but it definitely wasn't this as now the Dallas Cowboys move on to the Elite Eight and they will get the double trouble power up. So from here on out, if the Cowboys survive, they get still two players for every win. Starting now with Jair Alexander at cornerback and the Green Bay Packers don't really have much to offer. So TJ Hawkins. Hawkinson from the Vikings will now be on the Cowboys as well. Well, every single NFC game this round was basically just over in two seconds. Kind of boring, but the Lions were supposed to win this game and they did. And our final player still before we get to the Elite Eight will be Brian Burns. So after a quick sweet 16, we're down to these final eight teams in the AFC Bills versus Colts, Ravens versus Titans, and in the NFC, it's just looking very random. Buccaneers versus Seahawks and Cowboys versus Lions. Let's continue with the Bills and the Colts. I hate that I have to do this, but I'm actually running out of time. I'm supposed to be leaving for vacation soon, so we're going to simulate a game like this. It's the Colts versus Bills. The winner of this will make it to the Final Four. Right now, the Colts with Peyton Manning actually has a lead in the road, 17-6 to right now. But the Bills are fighting back. Now they take the lead and just past the third quarter. Now going into the fourth quarter, Peyton Manning takes the lead back, 24-20. to Buffalo has to go down to get a touchdown, 27-24. They get the ball back, and it looks like they're going to ice this game. The Colts got close, but there's only so far you can make it. Peyton Manning was the only thing going for him, and the Buffalo Bills will punch the first spot in the Final Four. Didn't take much of a thought process for this decision. It's going to be Tyreek Hill and the Buffalo Bills. You know, I'm not surprised the Ravens are currently trolling the Titans because they've had had issues with them in the past, and now Josh Johnson, who's now a 97 overall quarterback, cannot complete a simple three-yard pass. Let's try that again. We have 90 seconds. Josh Johnson backs up. He's at the 20-yard line. He's just going to go for a deep shot here. Send it out right now. Oh, what a catch. How did he come down with that? Okay, it was OBJ. That makes sense. I mean, he would have done that five years ago, maybe, but not today. Tyler Ott. Tyler Ott's its name. So that was the 97 to the 97 connection right there. It only picked up six. They're going to need more than that. Now they're going to hand this one off. I believe that's J.K. Dobbins. Once again, didn't he tear his Achilles? Who cares at this point? I'll just allow it. <laughs> you know, I'm not ruling the Titans out, though. Two timeouts in 30 seconds is enough, considering what CF we've seen today. There's D-Hop completion to the 37. 31 seconds, 31 apiece for both teams from the 37. Ryan Tannehill drops back, delivers. There there's D-Hop again. Is he going to get in the end zone? No, that's the best decision right there. I wouldn't even have tackled him if I were you, Kyle Hamilton. But nonetheless, they're going to drain the clock all the way down. They're going to kick a field goal to win this game. Make it 34-31. to 31. The Titans get it done. They'll be moving on to the final four. Maybe TJ Watt belongs to the streets because he's just getting passed around like nothing now. So we're going to simulate like this again. Now, remember the Buccaneers do have the afterlife power. So if they do end up losing this game, they still have a chance. Uh, and it's looking like they might actually lose because the Seahawks are up by 10 points right now. But who knows? 
maybe Baker Mayfield can cook something up as he's doing right now, but now is still down by 10 points, gets up to 24-21. Do they get the ball back here? They do not. The Seahawks will take off their afterlife power, and we will stay here for a second game. However, the Buccaneers will lose one player. That's how the afterlife power works, which really sucks because the Buccaneers will be playing their next game without afterlife power and without Aaron Donald. Yes, the score of this game is 6-7 to seven right now. The Seahawks are looking to beat the Buccaneers two times in a row. It's going to start with a field goal as they're going to need that right here. DK Metcalf gets them to the 42. 70 seconds left, 47-yard line. Geno Smith first down. This is in field goal range. DK again, and timeouts are starting to get called. The Seahawks really took their sweet old time to drill it down to the three-yard line. This is where they wanted to take the kick and they will take a 9-7 lead, this will be enough to move them on to the final four. So now the Seahawks essentially just bankrupt the Buccaneers. They just got Aaron Donald for winning the first game against the Afterlife Power, but now since they beat him twice, they can steal another player, that being Jesse Bates. Now our final Elite Eight game, it's between which team is the better Thanksgiving team. Right now it's tied 7-7, the Lions going down the field, getting 14-7 now. The Cowboys answer back, 14 apiece, going before halftime, 21-14. Lions have a lead, looking to make more of it. No, they cannot. The Cowboys will get a touchdown instead and now the Cowboys will have their first lead of the game now tied at 24 apiece Cowboys go down to get a field goal and Lions cannot answer Cowboys with the double trouble power will get two Lions and will move on as the final team in the final four the first of two additions will be Amon Ross St. Brown and here's the true game changer because Christian McCaffrey is now a Dallas Cowboy and so here's the final four teams we'll have Bills versus Titans and Seahawks versus Cowboys <laughs> And to save me some time, both semifinal games will be simulated like this, the quick old-fashioned way, which means that we have a 0-0 game right now before halftime. No teams have scored yet. Both these teams are really good. The Titans have gotten really good player steals, and that's why they're tied with the Bills right now, going into the fourth quarter. Now the Bills have a lead, looking to make it 17-7. They cannot. Titans have a lead, and they're actually going to win. The Titans are moving on to the final game. That's insane. And the final player steal from this video for the AFC will be Tyree Kill. This is their team right here. Tyree Kill. Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, Derrick Henry, Jamar Chase, they are looking pretty solid. They have a pretty big chance of winning this all. In which they'll meet this team from the NFC, it'd be either the Seahawks or the Cowboys. Both these teams are really stacked. I'd say the Cowboys have the upper hand as they are up 7-3 to right now, but the Seahawks have just answered back. It's 10-7. Cowboys up 14-10. Cowboys looking to make it more. 17-10. Tie game now, 17 apiece. Going to the fourth quarter, make it 24-17. Seahawks got to answer back with a touchdown. Can't do it on this drive. Can they get the ball back and make it 24-24? Yes. Overtime, maybe. Over time we are. Cowboys get the ball. Seahawks get the ball. Cowboys get the ball. I don't know what's happening. Seahawks get a field goal and they win the game and they're going to the championship game to play the Tennessee Titans. Honestly, I called this an upset. I thought the Cowboys would be unbeatable once they got the double trouble power. What a win. Oh my goodness. So because the Seahawks already have Saquon Barkley, I passed on giving them Christian McCaffrey. Instead, gave him Micah Parsons. So this is the final NFC team represented with Aaron Donald, Micah Parsons, Jesse Bates, AJ Brown, Saquon Barkley, and DK Metcalf. Those are their top players. Both these teams are pretty stacked. So this is the championship game. Will it be the Titans or will it be the Seahawks? 50 seconds left. We've seen some clutch plays around this time, especially with DeAndre Hopkins. It's tied game right now. If we can't get points on the board, then we're going to overtime. But who needs D-Hop when you have Tyree Hill? That's going to put him at the 37. Kick from the 30-yard line. About a 44-yard kick is my guess. It's up. It's good. The Seahawks have a chance. They get the ball back. 26 seconds to their name. They're from their own 25-yard line. Geno Smith also has one timeout. This is a good chunk of it right there. I believe that's Noah Fant. That's going to put him first and 10 to the 46. Unfortunately, the Seahawks Seahawks had to wait all the way down the five seconds to burn their final timeout. So this is the final play. Let's just hope he can at least get the pass off. He does. Maybe pass interference, maybe a catch. No, nothing at all, which means the Tennessee Titans out of all 32 teams are the one to win this 32-team bracket. Yes, player stealing definitely helped them a lot, and they were the 15th seed in this video, which is funny to say, but nonetheless, they got it done. They deserved it. They had big clutch plays, especially with Ryan Tannehill and DeAndre Hopkins. The fun part of this, it really doesn't need to make sense. It's a simulation at the end of the day, but nonetheless, the Titans get it done. Sorry if the ending felt rushed. I am very short on time right now. I'm going to get this video up as soon as possible, but nonetheless, thank you guys for watching another video, and I'll see you guys next time.